What, what are we drinking at the moment? You've got there, Mike, you've got our Pilsner, um, German style Pilsner, good bit of bitterness to it that Pilsner should have. It's our most popular beer, clean, crisp, suitably refreshing, 5%. Um, I've got the special pale ale, which is my favourite. Um, uh, more, more of an English style ESB, extra special bitter. Um, good malt background, good level of bitterness, 5.3%. Uh, I like it. Okay. You've, you've, you're one of a handful of people that have seen the full gamut from 82 through Matilda Bay through to uh, Ferrell and Swan Valley and, and the emergence of Margaret River. And how has the kind of growth surprised you being being kind of a, a stalwart of the industry? Yeah, I guess you know gro the growth has surprised me um, in, in a way. Uh, the uptake of craft uh, from a consumer point of view as well, and I think the the bigger the bigger players um, in in craft beer, be it the Ferrells um, in Swan Valley, um, you know, there's a lot of education that goes into converting a customer from his mainstream beer that he's been drinking for God knows how many years, and he's loyal to. It's like yeah, you don't change your footy club or your follow, do you? Yeah, you know, you're trying to convert them, and um, it, 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 They've done very well at it. I think the marketing of craft is good. Um, the growth surprises me, but doesn't surprise me, if you know what I mean. Um, if I think back 10 years ago when we opened, uh, December 06, you know, we were the third brewery in this region. Um, and now I think there's 10, 11, a couple more in planning. Um, there's, in my opinion, there's room for more. There's always room for more. Competition's healthy. Um, Look at how many wineries there are around in this region. You know, it is a tourist destination like the Swan Valley as well. You know, you've got breweries in, in the wine regions. Um, competition's healthy, as I said. I, I believe it, you've got to be you've got to be passionate about what you're doing, right? It's no good just thinking it's a nine to five job and oh geez, I need a holiday now. Yeah, I'm a bit worn out. No, nah, it's you've got to be passionate. You you're there. It takes as long as it takes, basically. Yeah. Um, and your core range um, is is a, quite a big core range. So how did how did that come about developing your, your core styles and what kind of approach do you guys have to you know bringing out seasonals and, and, and the like? Yeah, okay. Um, we started off life with, with four beers back in December 2006 when we opened. Um, and we did a lot of research, obviously, um, and trials as to what beers were out there in, in the craft scene or boutique scene as, as it was known as then. Um, and uh, not many places were doing a lager of any description because of the time involved and the time it takes. And obviously, it takes up tank space as well. Um, so lagers, whole whole kaleidoscope of lagers. But we went with a pilsner, and as opposed Czech, German, Czech, German, we went down the path of German. Right. You know, just that my preference. Um, it's turned out to be our, our most popular beer, our best-selling beer. Um, the second beer in our range when we started up was another German style beer, uh, the Bavarian Hefeweizen, so a uh, unfiltered wheat beer uh, with a nice bananary, fruity, phenolic aroma. Uh, wheat beers were very popular back in the day uh, with, with Redback uh, when they first, or oh, Matilda Bay when they when they produced Redback, the original Redback. Um, wheat beer is a good um, a good entry beer for people who are entering the craft scene. Um, in that it generally doesn't have a lot of bitterness. People who don't like beer are generally put off by, by the levels of bitterness. Um, so that, that's been popular. And then the second, the third one we, we came along with was the Special Pale Ale. Um, special Pale Ale and India Pale Ale, they're both English style ales, obviously my background being English. Um, and um, they're, they're pretty much, they're malt driven um, and use English hops. 5.3% uh, the Special Pale Ale. Um, then the India Pale Ale, a bit heavier, 5.5. Uh, the special's got a bit more bitterness to it. The reason we call it Special Pale Ale is the base malt is Marisotta, which is an English English barley grown grown in England. Okay. Um, nice biscuity sort of uh, flavour to it. Yeah. It's a good malt to work with. Okay. Um, over time, we introduced a, a, um, a seasonal stout at, um, a, few, a few years back now, um, and it became popular with the stout and porter drinkers. Um, became so popular that I was encouraged to in introduce it to you know our, our, our year-round lineup, and um, it has changed. It's evolved over time from from stout into a porter. Um, it was entered into the AIBA um, Australian International Beer Awards um, way back as a as a stout, and for two years running, I got good good feedback on it. It got a silver medal, but 
the comments were more suited as a porter. Right. So I was in a bit of a quandary. My punters liked it. It was getting good, good, good wraps um, with a silver and that. So all I did, I kept the same recipe and just changed it from Kawaramup Stout to Kawaramup Porter. So, and that stayed as a, as a year round beer. Um, then a few years back, we introduced a summer ale um, for summer and that became popular. So now we've got six beers in our core range. Um, and we try to keep them obviously flowing all year round. Um, my take on, on seasonals here at this venue is it's a bit difficult because we've only got four fermenters, two double sized fermenters. We're an eight hectolitre brewery. Um, so two double sized fermenters, uh, 16 hectolitres and they're dedicated to Pilsner because Pilsner takes time and it's our most popular beer. So effectively I'm juggling the other five beers through two fermenters. So occasionally there's a bit of a bottleneck uh, which makes it hard to, to introduce a seasonal, just a one off, because um, it means I'm gonna have to drop one of my core beers and that could upset people. So I yeah. tend to stay with the six and just try and you know continually improve. The pills and I don't play around with much. Um, people like it the way it is, I like it the way it is. Um, the Hefeweizen is a fairly fairly simple beer, there's not too much to play around with that. Um, it's more of a yeast driven beer. Uh, the special, I, I, special in India, I'm always playing around with different hops. I use different hops in the bittering, different aroma hops, um, just, just to mix it up so it's not just the same old, same old all the time. Those beers, uh, the, the, the ones that you've, you're kind of tweaking around the edges, they are available on tap, but uh, that what's, what's your packaging and distribution like and, and looking for product consistency? Are you mostly serving those guys at, at venue on premise? Yeah, that's right. We um, obviously with our size again, um, it's not viable to put our beer in, into bottles or cans. I'd love to, uh, but we just can't produce enough, you know, to, to make it viable. Um, we are typically um, our business model is out of an American brew pub where the beer that's brewed on site, the majority of it is sold on site. We have um, probably 12 taps, I think it is out and about locally um, in the region and up in Perth. Uh, in my opinion, there's probably nothing, no such thing as a permanent tap point apart from our taps we've got here. Because um, um, publicans choose you know, different beers, they want to mix it up for their punters as well to give them variety. Sure. So yeah, as it stands at the moment, we've got 12 tap points out and about. The Pilsner is our most popular. Um, that's out at about probably seven or eight of them. Um, there is a venue that takes our, our IPA and um, our summer ale. Um, uh, that's been pretty regular for the last year and a half. So you could call that almost permanent. Sure. Like local venue? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the, um, the distillery in Margaret River. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the good supporters of us, good fellows in Margaret River, the main street, good supporters. The Margaret River Hotel, the corner bar, good supporters. Um, you know, Clancy's in Dunsborough. Um, they showcase, you know, craft beers very well. You know, not just from the state, but from interstate. Um, we've been on tap there since they opened, I think it was three, three four years ago. Um, so that's been very good for us, yeah. So your your business model, Jeremy, is American style brew pubs, you mentioned, um, but you, you guys are in a completely rural setting. And when we were here, here the other day, we had a look at the hop plantation. And I wanted to kind of bring us around to, to talking about that, which is a, which is unique in, in WA, if I'm right. Tell us a bit more about how that came about and, and, and I guess harvest as soon, what you're planning to do with all those flowers. Yeah, we're, we're one of, there are a couple of other small places growing hops. In, in WA now, um, but we had uh, the, the rural setting that we're on. You correctly said, you know, we're about four k's east off Bustle Highway out here. Um, there's a couple of wineries around us, one immediately next door to us, and a couple more just down the road. Um, so we're not really we're not off the beaten track as such. You know, it's a nice little four k drive. Um, beautiful rural setting. Um, this land is zoned um, prime agricultural land, and to get it rezoned, they, the shire just wouldn't entertain that. So to, that prohibited the use of a hotel, tavern or licensed restaurant on it. So we had to go under a special facilities license. And also with the prime agricultural zoning meant we had to grow something that's used in the product. So it was either barley or hops. Now hops take up a much smaller footprint than barley and they tend to need less, less work. They're, they're a very hardy, resilient plant. Out there we've got, we've got nine different varieties. Um, we're a little, little bit too far north to, to get a real good yield, you know, if we were to do it commercially. Um, uh, hops used to be grown in the Manjimup Pemberton area many years ago by the Bunn family and they used to supply the Swan Brewery. 
uh, for I think 50 years. Uh, but then Swan Brewery, they got more demanding. They wanted to drop the prices and increase the yield and stuff like that. And you know, the poor family just couldn't, couldn't handle it. So they, they closed down. Um, yeah, they're, they're interesting things. They, they go dormant over winter. Um, then as soon as the ground warms up and the sun comes out, they start, they start growing. Uh, they get onto their strings and up they go, they climb and they don't stop climbing until they reach the top. Um, once they've reached the top, then they send out their lateral growth and that's where, where the flowers form, the actual hop flowers. And that's the, the part of the plant that's used um, as a raw material, the hop flower. And then obviously with the bigger commercial operations, that's the flower that's, that's processed and, and either pelletized or, or left in its, in its original form. You guys will, will take these off the, the bind in February, uh, late February? Yeah, that's right. They, 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 when I say ripen, they're ready. They, they, you want them to dry out a certain amount. You don't want them too, too wet, too, too green. Um, but we'll assess them and just pick some off and just put them in, put them in the kettle. More for, more for late hopping in the kettle than in the fermenter. Um, uh, if you were to dry hop with, with raw hop flowers, I, I believe, not that I've tried it, not on this operation, but at home I used to, I, I think you leave yourself open to maybe spoiling your beer a little bit because the pellets are more processed and you know yeah sure. and yep yeah. uh, do you guys get uh, your hot products as as hot pellets or flowers or, or, or how do you how do your raw materials kind of come about yeah in the in the day-to-day -day brewing uh, we we use hot pellets uh, typically for c consistency storability and extended shelf life you know you, that's what you want you yep. want you want consistency yep. with products so um, your, your, uh, your, your background coming out from England, how much has that influenced uh, your, where you are now with your, your styles that you've selected? Obviously there's some, some English uh, roasted barley that you're getting in for some of your brews. So uh, tell me a little bit more about your, your kind of where you came from uh, and your brewing journey. Yeah, I guess um, I came to Australia a long time ago, December 82, right? 30, 35 years ago coming up. And um, I, was, I was old enough to drink in England, which was good. Um, and I do, I enjoy the ales. I was never a lager person. You know, I, I enjoyed the real ales, the cast condition ales. And there's, there's a lot of bloody good and bad with that and everything in between. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, I, I really got into, into the English ales, those styles of beers. Um, when I came over here, so you're talking December 82, um, commercial beers, I think there were only two beers available in WA. You know, and that was Swan Gold and, and Swan Draft. Um, and that was it. You know, interstate beers weren't really that heard of, heard of that much. And there was certainly no, I hadn't even got into boutique or into craft. Um, so yeah, I, I was a bit disappointed with the beers. Yeah, they were refreshing and yeah, they knocked you over because they were bloody 5%, you know, big, big beers in terms of the alcohol or big enough um, in, in the sun, in the full sun. So um, yeah, I got myself a homebrew kit and um, yeah, there was probably just a couple of homebrew shops in, in Perth and they were bringing in stuff from England, be it Muntins and stuff like that, bits and pieces, more extract and this, that and the other. So yeah, I just got, got playing, got reading, you know, there's no, no internet, this is pre-internet days, yes. everything else, so you had, to, you had to read, you had to go to the library, you had to go to a bookshop, you had to ask people and um, yeah, there were a couple of bad batches, don't worry about that, there were some real spoilers. Um, but again, you learn, you evolve, things evolve and uh, I, I kept going back to the English, the English malt flavours, you know, and, and the hop, the, the balance between malt and hops. Um, and it just sort of evolved from there. Um, then Boutique, Matilda Bay came along, the, the, they opened up in, in, well, Netherlands originally, out of a garage. And then um, they moved into what was then the Freemasons Hotel in Fremantle, which became the Sail Anchor. And they produced this beer called, um, um, Bloody hell, Redback, that's right, Redback. And that knocked people's socks off, people loved it. Uh, yeah, the, real, the real staunch Frio people, ah, this smells like bloody perfume, they didn't like it. There was all sorts of crap going on, but they stuck by it, the Matilda Bay boys. And um, you know, then along came Dog Bolter and a few other beers evolved and, and slowly this, this snowball sort of started rolling down the hill and picking up a bit more, a bit more snow on it and, and gaining momentum. And of course now Craft jumped forward, God knows how many years. And I think there's like 500, 500 craft breweries in Australia. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy. What do you, uh, what, 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 so who do you look to in the WA 
beer scene um, now and who, who was you? Well, we'll go across the timeline, I guess, a little bit. Who, who were your inspirations starting out in, in brewing? Um, other, other brewers, other breweries? And then, and then who do you still look at, um, whether it's WA or the UK or, or anywhere else? I guess um, you know, a big, big inspiration and one of the first people I touched bases with regarding my idea was John Stallwood at Nail when he was brewing um, downstairs at Bobby Dazzler's in, in Perth. Um, and you know, he, I, I managed to get a meeting with him. Sat down with him during one of his busy brew days, and he looked he looked at me quite quizzically. He said, "Are you serious? You want to do this?" And I said, "Yeah, I am." You know, and he said, "You think about it. It's you know, you got to hock everything you have, and yeah, you know, where you going to sell your beer? You know, there's all these things, and who's going to deliver it? Who's going to da di da di da? Who's going to chase up the payment?" Yeah, you know, these were all the things that he was experiencing. Right. You know, being being a sole owner as well, um, and obviously Brendan Varris out at Feral, um, and also recently Will Will Irving out there as well um, out at Feral. Uh, Eastern States, I guess. I guess the boys is probably no bigger than Stone and Wood, Brad Rogers and his Merry Men. You know, they're they're a good bunch. Um, I like catching up with them. Uh, Overseas, uh, Alex Troncoso at Lost and Grounded. He used to be head brewer, or chief brewer at Little Creatures. Um, he helps. Uh, he was part of. He was leading the project to build their Geelong brewery. Um, he's now over in the UK at a, at a craft brewery called Lost and Grounded in Bristol. Um, he's. I find him very inspirational. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Bristol's one of my favourite places over. Nice uh, yeah. yeah. Good, good uh, side of country in Somerset too. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay, I, that's great. Uh, a couple of guys in there that um, that keep coming up repeatedly and, and throughout you know interviews and, and and it's always good to kind of see where else that you look to um, like uh, over in over in Bristol. But what do, what do you what do you drink when it's not Coromut Brewing in the fridge? What else is hiding in the in the bottom shelves of your your fridge? Okay, I've always got. Pretty much, I'll be honest here. I've always got some Cooper's Pale in the in the fridge. Um, invariably, there's Hop Hog in there. Um, invariably, at the moment, I've got some very nice Nell VPA, very pale ale, right. 6.2%. That's a nice beer to to finish the day on when you've been sweating in the brewery. Um, occasionally, I'll pick up some English beers, check the date on them, and yeah. Excellent. Um, still, still cask ales in, in or bottled, bottle conditioned cask ale when you can find some. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Always like Dan Murphy's carry a big range. Um, there's a local bottle shop in, in Margaret River. Settlers, Settlers Bottle Shop carries a good range of craft, international craft as well. Yeah. Great. Jeremy, where can people that are watching and listening uh, find out more about you guys, and, and how can they how can they find you? Especially, we've got uh, Bustleton uh, Southwest Beer Fest coming up, so they can head along to there. But uh, yeah, where else might they pop out for a tasting or a drink? That's right, Mike. As you said, we're we're at the uh, Southwest Craft Beer Festival. We've supported that festival. I think this is the sixth year. Um, this festival in Bustleton, and it is. It's a good it's a good venue where it's it's a beautiful venue, plenty of shade, where people can get together at one venue and just go around and every craft brewery in the southwest is there it's a great opportunity um, other than that I guess uh, our website is is a good point of contact and obviously on Facebook and Instagram uh, stuff like that we've got our beer in a handful of venues where we're, we're um, reworking our website at the moment so it, it, it's going to include where our beer is currently on tap um, but as I said it's mostly in this in this southwest region small bars restaurants and the like all right, well, thanks for taking time out, Jeremy. Appreciate you uh, taking time out from the, the kettle cleaning and the busy day you got ahead. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate thanks. it. Keep up the work. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Generally, the Eastern Staters say it better than the Perfects. Oh, yeah, jo right. yeah. John gets it in one second and, and all day. Cook. Mike and Cook. I keep going. Kawarama. Kawarama. Kawarama.